lot of people now are thinking when they come to Drexel, they're a bit scared also. No, I mean, students are, are always diverse. And frankly, that's, that's one of the wonderful things about being in a university environment. You, one of the aspects of our program that's really unique is, is our use of cooperative education. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that not only gives you the, the classroom experience, but also practical work experience that's part of, that's part of yeah. the degree program. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of our podcast, Talent First. Today I am in Philadelphia at the Drexel University, where I'm talking to Professor Kapil, who's one of the most distinguished voices in academia in the US. Hi sir, hi, how are you? Hello, I'm doing fine. I would, would love if you could introduce yourself to the audience. Sure, yeah, my name is Kapil Dandekar. Uh, I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering, also the associate dean for enrollment management and graduate education in the College of Engineering at Drexel. Perfect, so if you could talk a bit about your journey, how did you get here? And I think your journey, it's, it's been across like 30, 35 years, if I'm not wrong. Uh, <laughs> Just, yeah, I guess, <laughs> yes. 25 years, if I'm not wrong, 25. It's, it's very inspirational. So. Would love if you could give us like a quick summary of it. Sure, yeah, I mean, so I, I really grew up in the Washington DC area, um, I, uh, in, in, in Virginia. Uh, attended high school there, I had a great opportunity when I was starting off in high school to get some nice uh, research experience. I worked at the, uh, with the uh, United States Naval Observatory for a while, the Naval Research Laboratory. Uh, and, you know, during the time I was working at uh, the Naval Research Laboratory, I was doing some great work with uh, early uh, yeah. virtual reality and human-computer interaction technologies, and I had a chance to uh, teach uh, high school students uh, at night. Um, and I realized that uh, the combination of research and teaching were, was really compelling to me, yeah. and, and that's why I chose to pursue a career in academia. Mm -hmm. uh, I attended the University of Virginia uh, for my undergraduate degrees um, and then uh, went to the University of Texas at Austin where I completed my master's and my PhD and been working uh, in experimental wireless communications uh, since I got my PhD in 2001 oh. and uh, you know built up a lab uh, working on a lot of exciting topics and uh, uh, after a certain number of years, also started doing some administrative uh, work, uh, you know, working at the department level and now at the college, uh, and most recently uh, dealing with uh, uh, graduate education and enrollment matters. Sure. So, if you look at your journey, you also had an entrepreneurial stint. Yes. And now, normally people in academy are a bit shy from it. So, what made you take that plunge and uh, what is some of the learnings and things that we can learn from that? Sure, yeah, I mean, so one of the things that's I think really great about Drexel is that we, the students here have a r nice entrepreneurial spirit. Um, in my time at Drexel, I've been fortunate to write many patent applications, invention disclosures with students. Uh, I've been involved in three university spin-off companies, one yeah. of which I th is still going to this day, I'm very proud of, with a wow. former student of mine. And I, I think that really does speak really uh, highly of the kind of environment that there is at Drexel. Uh, you know, Drexel is an R1 research intensive university. We punch way above our weight class when it comes to generating new intellectual property. And I yeah. think the reason for that is because cooperative education and having students in the workplace mm -hmm. is really uh, part of the education yeah. that the students get here. So they see where the real problems are. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's been a great, uh, there's a great infrastructure that's in place and, uh, you know, the institution supportive of it and, you know, I've got, had a really nice chance to take what we were doing in the lab. My lab is very experimentally yeah. focused that so we build things, great. but, you know, we can't take things to market mm -hmm. and it was really uh, nice, I think, to, um, you know, to see mm -hmm. some of that technology take the next step, you know, from the laboratory uh, to the commercial environment. And you really see a lot of issues that you wouldn't see in the lab when you start yeah. thinking about how you're going to commercialize mm -hmm. some of the technology. So it's, it's really also, I think, informed the research and the kind of education that the students get as well by so, having those experiences. So, Professor, a lot of questions are around AI. Mm -hmm. A lot of the talent, a lot of the future and talent that we're talking to that is sort of interested to come to Drexel, they have been talking about AI, about the changes in the workforce we, we look at. Now, how have you guys embraced that? How has that been incorporated in the curriculums, in the teachings, projects, internships? That would be great. Sure, yeah, so yeah, so we have a Master of Science degree in Machine Learning Engineering, and 
you know, one of the things I think that's really, well, there's several things I think that are great about it. Uh, the first is that it is machine learning engineering, right? So we're not just teaching machine learning for machine learning's own sake, right? Mm -hmm. We're looking at machine learning through the lens of a wide variety of applications. So right. you can learn about the foundations of machine learning, how the techniques are put together, some of the foundations, yeah. the theoretical aspects. Uh, but then you can also, and you can learn about how it's actually implemented in hardware, mm -hmm. uh, which is not necessarily right. something you'll see if you go to a, 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 something where it's only about the about mm -hmm. the coding. So you'll see how it runs on the hardware, but then you'll also get the applications. So we mm -hmm. have some really exciting classes that we offer in multimedia forensics, where mm -hmm. the students will can learn, you know, how do you detect fake news, you know, yeah. images or videos that have been manipulated to wow. convey messages, or genomic signal processing, or or other applications mm -hmm. where uh, you know that you can use machine machine learning for engineering yeah. applications. And that's really kind of my own personal view of machine learning. I, I know that, you know, I've been in research and, and academia for a long time and I've seen lots of fads kind of right. come and go. Right. Right. And, you know, I, I think that the temptation that a lot of people will fall into is, is that machine learning is the end in and of itself. And mm -hmm. as engineers, we look for, for tools in our tool box, right? There's programming, yeah. there's, you know, and machine learning, in my opinion, is one, is one of those tools, right? You can yeah. use it for uh, that, but you know, if you just focus only on studying the tool mm -hmm. rather than how the tool can be used, um, you know, I think that you're not really getting the full picture. You're not really going to be able yeah. to take the, the full opportunity. So, you know, I teach a class uh, at the graduate level in a software-defined radio laboratory where the students get hands-on experience using radios. Wow. And, and one of the nice things about the class is that, you know, the students can have a chance to um, actually see how radios can coexist in a hostile interference yeah. environment. And there, you know, it's not just machine learning for machine learning's yeah, own sake, yeah. but how do you say a machine learning algorithm to make a radio that's resilient to interference, right? right. right? And, and we do it in the form of a competition that we call Radio Wars, where the students can uh, learn about how to and kind of compete with one another to yeah. implement different radio technologies. But you can also use uh, machine learning as a way for uh, you know, showing how the radio can be uh, dynamic to different types of unforeseen circumstances. And, right. and, and that's, you know, part of making uh, next generation wireless networks more resilient, right, to mm -hmm. have that capability. Wow. So a lot of people now are thinking that, you know, when they come to Drexel, they're a bit scared also. Drexel is one of the top 50 universities in the U.S., all the rankings, everywhere it is the top. They're worried that the kind of people that they will be starting with they all will be really, really high performers. So can you explain to us how an average person in Drexel is? How would you define them? And can you also explain to them that everyone is coming with their own strengths? Yeah, sure. No, I mean, students are, are always diverse. And frankly, that's, that's one of the wonderful things about being in a university environment. You meet different types of people, each coming with different backgrounds, their own perspectives, their own interests. And, you know, I think that we give students a lot of the tools that they need to really kind of navigate that environment. You have an opportunity to take classes, not just in engineering, but across the university. We are yeah. a comprehensive university. Uh, it's a great environment being in Philadelphia where you can meet not just Drexel students, but students from yeah. uh, surrounding universities. So it's, it's a great environment, a very supportive and welcoming to, to populations from all over the world. Uh, but, you know, one of the aspects of our program that's really unique is, is our use of cooperative education. Mm -hmm. uh, and that not only gives you the, the classroom experience that you, you get uh, at, at other universities, but also practical work experience that's part of, that's part of yeah. the degree program. And, and that allows students to get some insights into right. you know, practical workplace issues, how to articulate their career goals. And as a result, you know, regardless of where the students yeah. turn, start out, mm -hmm. Um, the program between its combination of, of you know, curricular uh, uh, matters as well as uh, co-op really does create very mature graduates, you know, right. people you really see who are prepared to go out into the workforce. And, um, you know, we have uh, co-op at the undergraduate level as well at Drexel. And, you know, you know just if you look at the, the maturity of our graduates as they, after they come out of that program because they have that, um, all of the employers that we talk to always, you know, really comment on that, that our students are exceptionally well prepared to enter the workforce uh, after going through our programs. So, Professor, like, with Drexel, there are a lot of industry associations, a lot of associations with corporations that we have seen Drexel is known about. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us about 
some in industry connect that people that will be a part of the MS in you know various programs that Future and US Pathways running with Drexel. Uh, can you talk us a bit about the industry connect? Sure. Yeah. So, so we have a Steinberg Career Development Center that manages one of the largest employer relationship databases yes. in the country, right? I think in the world. Yeah. In the well, one of the ones. Yes. And uh, it's. Uh, it, it, so we maintain those connections. We have a Drexel Solutions Institute that also manages uh, partnerships, industrial partnerships with various um, or, or organizations. And there are lots of opportunities for students mm -hmm. to, uh, to enter different types of industry when they graduate. Um, you know, we have students who go into you know, all different technology verticals. And that kind of goes back to what I was saying about the, you know, the, you get the foundations, you get yeah. the hardware, but then you get different types of applications. And, you know, we did an analysis and we saw where our students end up and they end up in highly diverse areas. You know, yeah. Of course, you would find people in like the, the big technology companies. In my, in my own laboratory, I think I have three or four students who are at Apple who are working wow. on, uh, on different aspects of wireless communications. But, right. but you know, so there's big tech companies, there's you know, smaller companies, technology mm. startups, which I think is really exciting to see that. Mm. But you know, also pathways that you wouldn't necessarily expect when you're getting an engineer engineering degree. You know, we have a surprising number of students who end up going into finance. Uh, finance? For example. Yes. Really? Yeah. Uh, why? Well, you know, there are different theories for that, but, you know, if you look at, you know, some of the, uh, the way that technologies are being used, the engineering background provides a lot of uh, expertise that would uh, be needed for finance, right? Mm -hmm. How do you do micro trading if you're trying to have low latency communication links between Chicago and New York City and London for yeah. you know for, uh, financial uh, transactions? Right. You know the, that you know getting the, those things to happen very quickly and and using the, you know having the right algorithms in place. You know you can you, you know you can do that. So yeah. you know so we have people going into finance. In, in law and medicine, um, you, know, the, the, you know, really, um, you know, um, uh, nice opportunities. And, and Philadelphia as an area, I think, is also very strong. You know, we have, um, you know, uh, uh, Spark Therapeutics, which is a major cell and gene therapy company, is actually building a building yeah. right next to our campus so they can access the the uh, the uh, expertise that's oh. that's around the university. A number of companies in this area are kind of coming closer so that mm -hmm. they can kind of you know, leverage uh, yeah. uh, uh, the uh, potential partnerships with Drexel. Yeah. But you know, if you go around, you know, there, there's pharmaceutical companies, telecommunication companies, defense contractors, mm. you know, uh, different types of uh, technology companies. So lot, mm. there are lots of opportunities for students. And Philadelphia being a major city in the Northeast, you know, we're right mm. between New York City and Washington. It's perfect location. It's a perfect location. Yeah. Not expensive as some of the other major cities in the, in the East Coast. Right. And, uh, and, and it allows you to, uh, to, to have lots of opportunity when you graduate. Professor, there are a lot of you know Indian students when they are looking at the US. Uh, again, for them it's a it's a new country, it's an alien place. And with, with Drexel we have seen that the way the Indian diaspora is sort of respected and sort of being part of the culture. Can you talk to us a bit about the Indian diaspora at Drexel uh, as well as the fact that you have seen success stories of Indians who of, of people who came from India came on their F1 visas, I-20s, and today are building flourishing careers in the U.S. Yeah, so, no, I mean, uh, some of my, I've, I've had a large number of students who've, who've come from India, and I think they all enjoy the pathway, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I've certainly seen many students, you know, go through the program, you know, do well, get jobs, and, and uh, go on to, to productive careers. Uh, but, yeah, and we give students, and well, and certainly there's a nice Indi supportive Indian community here yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there are a number of student organizations. We have uh, Pragathi, which is a you know, Indian Student Association. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we have International Graduate Students Association. And, um, you know, various groups that can be used to, um, you know, foster a sense of community. And, and that's not only at Drexel, you know, there's surrounding universities. Yeah. We're, we're close by to uh, some of the major centers of, of Indian population mm -hmm. in the United States yeah. are, are within an easy drive of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in terms of cultural opportunities, so if you're coming from, mm -hmm. uh, you know, coming from India and looking for that connection, you, you can certainly find that. Uh, but, you know, I, I have to say also, you know, I, I've also seen very uh, pleasantly, you know, students come from India and, 
you know, they live in an international house and they see yeah. not just people from India, no, but they also see people right, from right. all over the world. And, yeah. and, and kind of seeing uh, you know, people get that kind of global perspective mm -hmm. being in a city like Philadelphia. That's why you should come, right? Yeah. You'd come for a global experience. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not just, uh, you know, being in the classroom with other you know, yeah. people from the same country. You, you want to try to meet other people. And, and uh, you know, that's what we uh, try to do being a, a global. So, so, Professor, now let's say I'm a student. I'm, a, I'm sort of an aspiring candidate. I'm part of the Future is U.S. Pathway cohorts. What are you looking for? Like, technically, we know what you guys are looking for. Non-technically, when you look at a person, when you look at a profile, how do you assess that profile? So, yeah, I mean, there are, no, there are a number of components to it. So certainly there's a technology or having a, the techno, technological background, right? Looking for an engineering undergraduate degree, you know, generally, you know, uh, you know if people have uh, industrial experience, that, that's wonderful. You know, we, yeah. do, we definitely do take that into account. Um, and, you know, having that, that strong undergraduate foundation, you know, mm -hmm. having that thirst uh, to, to pursue a graduate degree, you know, obviously something that's needed. But you know there are a number of other intangibles as well. You know there's certainly you know for students who might be interested in evaluating research. You know you can do a thesis with your master's degree. That might be something that would be appealing to students. But not just you know uh, technology and, and you know being good at math or, or science or anything like that. But you know also having creativity, initiative, yeah. integrity. Mm -hmm. You know all of the all of these components I think are really important in, yeah. in, in you know in, in the students to be able to. Um, you know, be able to, you know, deal with each, each other well in the classroom, but also, you know, have the fullest opportunities when you graduate. Wow. And now, if they come to Philadelphia, what are some fun things to do here? <laughs> so, yeah, so Philadelphia is a great place to live. I, I have to say, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't grow up here, uh, but um, you know, I've, I've lived here now for over 20 years, and I, I actually live downtown. I live mm -hmm. at uh, 20. 25 minute walk away from campus. And oh, nice. I, I've always found Philadelphia to be very, you know, very welcoming and, and you know, a, a really nice place to live. Uh, you know, you don't need to have a car to get around campus. You can just walk or, you know, mm -hmm. we're one block away from 30th Street train station. So mm -hmm. you wanna hop on a train and be in New York City or Washington DC in a couple of hours, you can do that. But you know, like if you walk another block past there, you can go to the Schuylkill River Trail, and you know, my uh, I have two boys, and you know, I, I we like to go bike riding there, and you know, up and down the the Schuylkill River Trail, and you're in one of the largest in-city parks in the United States, right? So you get a little bit of green space, mm -hmm. and just a beautiful ride, and you see past Boat, uh, Boathouse Row, and you see you know people who are doing. Uh, uh, crew and 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 uh, you know boating and the Schuylkill River, yeah. um, but but also being around the city, there's so many opportunities in terms of restaurants, uh, you know, uh, cuisines from all over the world that you can enjoy, uh, lots of museums if you're into that, yeah. um, you know, and you know, and, and if you're into sports, there's there's no place better to be than mm -hmm. Philadelphia, yes. yeah, uh, you know, just downtown. We have you know major you know baseball, you know football, you know. Uh, basketball opportunities, a short drive out to see uh, soccer, and you know if you're into sports at all, and, you know Philadelphia sports scene is is top notch. Everyone here is really uh, um, you know passionate um, you know, about uh, about sports, and mm -hmm. and you know and it and it builds, I think, as a result, mm -hmm. a, a nice community. Perfect. So, one final question for you: uh, for the Futurans U.S. Pathway candidates, for this collaboration between Futurans and Rexel, what is that? one piece of message, advice, you'd want to give to the prospective candidates about this program? So, yeah, so it's a program that I think we've put a lot of thought into, and I think it's a program that'll give students a lot of opportunities, right? They can really, you know, build a program that really aligns with their background and what their interests are. You know, there's an opportunity to do a co-op um, as, as part of that, so they can get some practical work experience. You know, they can do a thesis, but then they can also enjoy, you know, being in Philadelphia, being a student yeah. here. So, um, you know, th I, I think there's a lot uh, t that's really great about this partnership, right? That uh, mm -hmm. it's providing that pathway uh, so the students can bring in some transfer credits and, you know, have a um, accelerated pathway through our program. And I think, you know, if they, 
you know, see what opportunities are there and they're willing to yeah. accept it um, yeah. and are, you know, and, and willing to do some hard work, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's not a walk in the park getting a master's yeah. degree, but it's something that I think is really rewarding, right? That they can uh, really, um, uh, you know, uh, take all of these exciting mm -hmm. classes, have these opportunities, and then, you know, uh, you use that as a pathway to future uh, gainful employment. Perfect. And so, sorry, one final, final piece of <laughs> question. You know, if you had to introspect, from your life, uh, your life in Philadelphia, uh, what is some learnings we can get from that, that we can we learn from, take it from there? Again, this is just, we've, I didn't ask you this question before, just on top of your head, some things that we can sort of learn from you. Uh, about uh, dr about Gen Drexel or? Generally, or life, general? career. Uh, <laughs> entrepreneur, <laughs> academia, so th there's a lot of, Things. So, you know, I, 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 I think that, yeah, I have done a lot of things. You know, I'm a, I'm a researcher, educator, yes. I've done some stuff. On, but I think the environment has been very supportive of that. And I, and I think that's important, right? That there, there's opportunity, right? That's, that's really, you know, the main thing. If you're willing to, you know, put your heart into something, uh, you know, you, you can find a way to make it happen. I think, I think and I think that's really encouraging, yeah. right? That, uh, you know, if, if you want to try to do something, you know, we try to find a way to, mm -hmm. to help you make that happen, right? And, 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 and which I think is very positive, right? That's what we always seek to do with the university environment, to uh, be supportive and help the students to find the best version of themselves. Perfect. I think this was super, super helpful. I think a lot of people are inspired to come to Drexel with the Future in U.S. Pathway. Thank you so much, sir. Really, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Okay, Thank you. Pleasure.